Hey, how's it going? Not too bad. How are you doing, Pastor Rikos? I cannot uh, complain there, Pastor K. That's good. I I could probably complain, but it's uh it's good things to complain about. I'm a little worn out from uh, first day of VBS here uh, at Trinity, but good things. We, so uh, hey, what's our topic today? We're going to talk about prayer. So we're going to talk about what the Bible says about prayer. We should probably stay on that topic because my brain might be all over the place. So um yeah what <laughs> i'll let you take the first crack at it <laughs> what do you what does the bible say about prayer uh i'm going to use the classic dogmatic statement that uh, provided by dr keeler in his uh summary of uh, christian doctrine he states that it's how we prayer is how we relate to god all right now what does the bible say about prayer <laughs> well, boy, there's a lot of things about prayer. I mean, he would start with the the Lord's, you know, the the ideal prayer that uh, that Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter six, the Lord's prayer. I think is, you know, uh, we can go to our heavenly Father uh, because of the person and work of Jesus Christ. And when we can't even think about what we can pray for, the Spirit groans on our behalf or intercedes yeah. on our behalf. And really, it uh, in prayer, in some sense, is it's. It, well, it, not more so than just some sense, but it is actually a, now that we are children of God, we are into that, into the Holy Trinity, that conversation that takes place within the Holy Trinity itself. Right. <clears throat> we partake of that. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a cool way to think about it. I never really thought about that, how um, that, that verse, I think it shows up a couple of places, but Romans 8, 26, the spirit helps us in our weakness for when for we do not know what to pray for as we ought but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words and so you're saying that's a conversation going on within the trinity that we get to be a part of that's cool <laughs> right well, we, yes and how we can you know yeah be a part of that uh, with us relating to god but also uh it the inverse of us relating to God, God relates to us through his word, word and sacraments, the means yeah. of grace. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's, that's cool. I, um, I, I, there, there is, like you said, there's so many things, uh, um, that the Bible says about prayer. Um, there's, uh, probably, I, I didn't do a full word study here, but one of the uh, peek behind the curtain, one of our, our go-to sources that you and I have agreed that is is useful uh, for this is openbible.info. And yes. uh, and you, you put in a topic and it gives you, it's like, a, I guess it's a modern concordance or an internet concordance for you, but um, but that that's just got a hundred verses off the top. And, I, and that's not exhaustive, I think by any stretch. Um, so it'd be, that'd be a, good word count if I, I don't know if my brain's active enough to to pull that up quickly but but yeah i, I think the, the bible has so much to say about prayer and i think part of this one of the difficulties that we're going to have in this discussion is what not to say <laughs> you know because because we can't say everything the bible says about prayer um we we wouldn't have time to uh to do that and it wouldn't be uh very engaging um you, you'd probably uh click away sooner than later um but but for me i i think one of the things that that the Bible's quite clear about that we often neglect about prayer. And if I can form another question for it, um, for it that I, I like to throw at people is why do we pray? And I, and I think our default answer is, well, because we need things from God, or we might say it a little nicer than that. But uh, I love what Martin Luther does in the large catechism. And here I go off the Bible. Um, but, but what he says is, um, quite exhaustively in his introduction to the Lord's Prayer section in the large catechism is he talks about we pray because God commands us to pray. We pray out of obedience to God. And, and that doesn't sound as um, enticing or alluring or as exciting as we pray because God gives us things when we pray to him, which is true. Um, but, but I think that's a great place to start. You know, God says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. The, 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 um, the Apostle Paul is quite clear, pray without ceasing, and, and as inspired by God, um, he should do that. First uh, Chronicles 16, verse 11 says, seek the Lord in his strength, seek his presence continually. Um, I mean, there's just so many places where uh, scripture gives us um, instructions to pray, and perhaps um, if we had to put it into a commandment, this, this is a second commandment, 
issue for us. Um, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, which we always think about the negatives, but I, I love how um, the explanation in the small catechism brings us to the positives, you know, but um, we should not curse, swear, use, mis use satanic arts, lie or deceive by God's name, but call upon it in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. And, and so to, to live in the second commandment to use God's name appropriately means to use it in prayer. So, so yeah, lots of things that the Bible says. Jesus gives us a very great model of prayer like you, you, you talked about, and, and we get this indication that, um, boy, I, I'm, that's going to stick with me, this, this conversation that happens between the Trinity um, that we get to become a part of by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what, what a wonderful uh, concept. It's kind of mind-blowing because whenever you talk about the Trinity, it kind of makes your mind melt a little bit because we can never fully comprehend God. But, but to know that we're in that conversation because of, of who God makes us to be is great. Well, even and going with that uh, topic with God, staying with God uh, and thinking of it in the, Trinity, the Holy Trinity, um, you know, God provides for all people, even the unbelievers. Mm -hmm. He does. He provides for all. And we, we see that as a first article, understanding an apostle's creed. But us Christians, we Christians pray to God, even though God gives all these things. We know he does it even for those who don't pray to him or even believe in him. But for us Christians, by praying for these, like give us this day our daily bread, the fourth petition. Knowing that God will give this, give those things to us, we can also give him the glory and the praise and thanks that he has given that right. to us. Yeah. And that's what God wants from us in our prayers is to thank him for everything he does right. bring to us. Yeah. And, and that's really the difference between, you know, what we as believers and unbelievers who receive a lot of times many of the same things that we do. You know, yeah. the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Yep. Um, but it's a great opportunity for us Christians to, to an, in an unbelieving world, to give God praise and glory for yeah. all the wonderful things that we have. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I love it when um, Christians pray, um, period. That, that should be a, a statement right there. But I love it when Christians pray and they, they um, explicitly call upon the name of Jesus and they call upon the name of God, the Father, our creator, and, and call upon the Holy Spirit explicitly in their prayers. Um, especially when they're public prayers, because it is, it, it becomes not just a conversation with God, you know, us asking things of God, but it's a, it's a, it's a confession to the world that this is who we are praying to. And it's not just a general prayer. There was a, I, I recorded a Bible study with Pastor Love for our Sunday morning study with, um, uh, for, for Sunday morning Bible study, I guess is what it's called. Um, but I, I made this point there, but it, but it bears, um, conversation is is there was a, a pastor who asked his confirmation class he said does God answer every prayer and what would you say yes and, and I would say you're wrong I got you but I was hoping I was going to get you but but no God doesn't answer every prayer because the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective so prayer of uh, a Christian's prayer are the prayers that God's tuned into and that he's answering um just this verse this like I said the open bible.info Proverbs 28 verse 9 says, if one turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're praying and you're not you don't know who you're praying to or you have no confession of faith in God, your prayers are going to go unanswered. It, but for the Christian, your answer is correct. You know, a Christian prayer yes, is right. always answered by God. And, and that's something that we take great comfort in. Well, it's too. And it's interesting you mentioned that it is is who we're praying to. It's also a first commandment issue. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so a lot of people pray. I mean, you have a lot of different religions pray, but who do they pray to? Yeah. And, and us Christians, we pray again, going back to that conversation within the Holy Trinity. Yeah. We pray to the Holy Trinity. Yeah. To the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I think that's what it means to pray in Jesus name. And I, and, just to unpack that further i think we were you were going to go there it sounds like but but even to pray in jesus name is not only within the holy trinity itself but according to scripture yeah right the word made flesh yeah and, and i think that is one of the places where i want to spend i don't know if it'll take a lot of time but i, I one of the key points that i want us to take from what the bible says about scripture or what the bible says about prayer is is the role of scripture in our prayer 
the role of the word of God in our prayer is um, perhaps obvious when we say prayers like the Lord's Prayer, because we're taught that through scripture. Um, but even when we're praying ex corde, from the heart is, is what that Latin word ex corde, Latin two words phrase means, um, or, or praying um, prayers that others have written, or, or you know, praying um, in the moment without, you know, reciting a prayer. It, prayer should draw upon the promises of God. And, and where do we get those promises? We get them from scripture. And, and I think it's a beautiful thing to, to kind of model that prayer life, whether we're raising children or, or leading congregations or, or um, meeting with friends, wherever we have the opportunity to pray. But just to, um, in, in this, I, sorry, my brain just went three different directions at once. So I want to try to get to those points, but we, we want to make sure that the promises of God are part of our prayer, because when we use them, we know we're praying according to the word of God. We know we're asking for, for things that are pleasing for him. And, and the really cool thing is we know the answers to those prayers. Um, and, and so one of the things you can do is, is have your Bible open while you're praying and, and look for those promises from God and, and use them in your prayer. Um, and then uh, it, saying that, my, my third point, that was my first two points, is to use the promises of God in prayer and then to to um to read pray with your bible open but the third point is is that makes prayer sound difficult that I, I think that's one of the things that I, I i like to shy away from is making people think that prayer is something that you have to do a certain way or that you have to be at a certain level in order to do it and, and if you ever felt that way that's that's uh that's that's of the devil i i think that would be the devil's temptation to to lead us to think oh well i'm not I don't know my Bible well enough to pray. I, I don't know the promises of God well enough to, to, to lean into them in my prayers. And, and I think that's all a bunch of malarkey to use a, a fun word, right? Uh, but the, uh, but the, uh, the gifts that come through God's word are gifts that we get to open in prayer even. And I think that's a great thing to, to, to know and to understand about prayer. Cause you, yeah, cause we're kind of getting to the form of prayer and how, you know, what's that Prayer yeah. look like yeah and there are written prayers that are great there's the ex corde prayers and then of course you have the ideal prayer the lord's prayer yeah and i think there's uh, with my own personal use of the lord's prayer of course we say you know we have it is as it's written which i think is the purest prayer or form of prayer i think we can have because it it really gets down to the bare necessities the big questions in life that prayer answers mm-hmm but at the same time, when you're doing an ex corde prayer, I'll use the Lord's prayer as my structure. Yeah. Uh, if I'm praying with someone who's ill, you know, we pray, you know, you teach us to pray, Lord, thy will be done on earth as it heaven. We ask that you, you know, or yeah. you're, you're asking for some type of need in the temporal, give us this day our daily bread. You know, we're praying for food or uh, you're praying that the Lord would forgive you. You know, you forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us right so you can, you can have you can see why it's such an ideal prayer because it's it's when it's spoken in it in the way it's written for him it's it's uh it's a great prayer when you're in distress and you don't have the words to say yeah absolutely there's nothing better than just sitting down and just praying the lord's prayer yeah but at the same time if you're doing an ex corde prayer and you're praying with somebody you can use that structure as the as the start off with one of those petitions yep yeah, no, I think Pastor Love was the one who taught me, um, uh, gave a lot of depth to the Lord's Prayer usage along those lines. Um, he, he, he said, uh, and he often does this during meetings, it's a powerful way to pray the Lord's Prayer is, uh, you got a situation, say I'm, say I'm, um, I got a, a difficulty with my brother, John, I don't have a brother, John, so this is a made up story. Um, but, but say I'm thinking about John and whether John's struggling with something and I want the Lord to be with him or, or John has done something to me, maybe it's connected that way. So, so you could pray the Lord's prayer like this, our father, John's father, my father, you are in heaven. You're above John and I may your name be holy in John's life in my life as well. Uh, may your will be done for John. May your will be done for me as well. May your kingdom come to John. May your kingdom come to me. Um, give John what he needs this day and give me what I need. Give us our daily bread. 
forgive John his trespasses and, and Lord, help me to forgive John when he's sinned against me and, and help me to forgive others and forgive me my trespasses and, and lead John away from temptation, keep him from temptation, deliver John and myself from evil, bring peace and healing to this situation for yours is the kingdom power and glory forever and ever. Amen. You know, something like that is, is yeah. just adds such depth and puts some meat on the bones, if you will, to apply it to um, our daily situations. And when you start to think about the Lord's Prayer that way, it's almost like each petition, each line of the Lord's Prayer becomes a sentence starter, and, and it, it helps you guide your prayer life. And it's a great way to, to pray the way that Jesus has taught us to pray. Now, there is a somewhat of a debate sometimes. I don't think it's so much in our circles, but I do see it in other camps where, you know, some will say written prayer is the only way to go. Some will say excorded yeah. prayers. I mean, is there any uh, legitimacy? Uh, is, is there anything legit about that argument uh, that we can, you know, one or the other? Or, I, or do you think that actually both forms are on equal ground? No, I, th I think that's a great um, thing to wrap our heads around. I, I wish I would have done a little more study on this, but I'm pretty sure in the Bible, um, the Bible reuses prayers. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> Um, book of psalms <laughs> yeah yeah i was gonna say yeah the the book of psalms is prayer so that's an obvious one but um the, what's what's the shema hear o israel the lord our god the lord is, is one yeah um, that that's a refrain throughout the 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 this the old testament especially um but but i i think there's uh, so i think there's biblical um what do you call it biblical credence biblical um patterns to follow of using patterned prayers prayers that others have prayed already it's not as if god's like i've already heard that prayer i'm not going to do that one today you know i've already answered that one um it's been used up that's that so so i i think we can say that that's those who would say that to use written prayers or patterned prayers is yeah. is not good i i would say that's that's not helpful and then those who are that because i think then there's those like you mentioned in the camp who would say you can only use maybe the Lord's Prayer. You can only use prayers from Scripture. You can only use prayers that have been written by holier people, whatever that might mean. Um, but but that, that I think, is a, a bu bunch of a malarkey, too. That's twice now I've used that word. Um, but but we, ha we have the gift of, of God's Word to us. He's, he's called us and created us to be creative individuals. And, and I think there's such beauty in, in prayers that come from the heart. Now, that doesn't mean they're any better than prayers that others have written. I, I, God doesn't say pray, but only pray this way. And that's not you. That's not what Jesus said when he said the Lord's Prayer. When you pray, say is is what he said. Um, and he didn't say only say. Say it exactly like this, um, which would be kind of concerning because we got slight differences between the Luke account and the Matthew account of the Lord's Prayer. But but no, I, I, I don't know if that answers that clearly, but I, I don't think we can live in one camp. I, and I think there's a beauty in the variety. Um, there are times when, you know, you, you can sit down and, and open and read the prayers of others, whether they're the prayers of Jesus, the prayers found in the Psalms, or the prayers written by um, other people within the church. And then there's there's beauty in the the moment when I, I find myself praying a lot when I'm driving, um, when, when you, you don't have time to read and you can't maybe even listen to the prayers of others, but you can actually just off the top of your head, have a conversation with God, which I, I think is one of the most beautiful things about God's relationship with us is picturing it as a father with a child. And um, the, one last thought here before I stop talking <laughs> is uh, there's a story I heard about a, a woman who came to her pastor. She was upset. She's like, pastor, I try to pray every night, but I find myself falling asleep whenever I pray. And and I just feel like I'm sinning against God because I can't pay attention to my prayers. And and the pastor comforted her and said, hey, um, what's it like when you climb into your dad's lap as a child and, and you have a conversation and you fall asleep? Do you think your dad gets upset with you? Or do you think he's just like thrilled that you love him so much? You feel so right. comfortable there in his arms. And um, and I, I think that's a great picture of prayer as well. What about the length of prayer? Because, uh, <laughs> you know, because some, you know, you it, we've all gone to the family reunions and someone gets up and prays and they go for five minutes type of thing. Just an example. Yeah. But, you know, one of my favorite uh, ex corte prayers is the, the Pharisee and the tax collector. Yeah. Right. As you have the tax collector, he beats his chest. Lord, be merciful to me, a, a sinner. 
uh, talk about short. You know, yeah. it says what it needs to say. But what do you think about the length of prayer? Yeah, I honestly, I think when prayers get too windy, and I do think they can get too windy, I think we might be forgetting what prayer is. And I find myself doing this uh, from time to time where um, I'll, I'll lead a Bible study. And as I'm praying, I'll remember a point I wanted to make. And so that will become part of my prayer. And not to say that prayer can't teach us as well as we hear from other things, but but I think that in my opinion, at least, is is one of the temptations with the length of prayer is, is that we fall into is that we we forget prayer is talking to God who knows everything. He just he just needs to know what we need. He doesn't need to know everything. Um, I don't know. That's my thought on that. What do you think? You think? Yeah, I'm with you. I think just because uh, I think when you once the length of prayer gets like you worded it well, gets windy. I think it Jesus specifically dresses that in the Sermon on the Mount about those who love to stand in the street corner and, and yeah. say long-winded prayers just to be heard um, by others, not by God, but by others. Yeah. And, and yeah, sometimes that's not for us to judge, but God knows, uh, he knows the hearts of those who, sometimes you have people who offer a, a, a long prayer. Maybe it's legit. It's for a good yeah, reason. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I do think sometimes there's sometimes there's some showmanship that comes along with prayers. Um, yeah, I, I yeah. tend to always pray on the short side, keep it short, sweet to the point. I know what I'm, I, I know what I want the the Lord to hear me with, and I that's me. But yeah. others are different. Yeah, I, th I think that honestly, just kind of reflecting on this, I I think a good rule of thumb would be let your personal prayers be long, let your public prayers be brief. I, I think that would probably be um, not that that needs to be a rule, but I, I do think that there could be a, a temptation or a danger in um, over praying <laughs> yeah. in the public form, because it's, right. it's easy to be tempted uh, into saying, I mean, there, there's some people I'm, I'm not always one of them but or ever one of them but there's some people who, who just can string together beautiful phrases and you love to listen to them and so you could just sit there forever and listen to them pray but at the, the same time is that necessarily the the point of prayer is it to use um like like jesus says when you pray do not heap up empty phrases as the gentiles do for they think they will be heard for their many words it, 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 I think it's a heart matter, like you, like you just said, and and I think it's a good thing. It's always a good thing to be aware of where we might fall into sin, so that we can repent, and and desire to do better as the Spirit leads us. Yeah, no, that's that's a point well taken. It uh, so I, I I think the the uh, the length of prayer is kind of a an naughty offering for the most part. Uh, it just depends on the individual as well, but. Also on the heart, I, I like I like the fact that you brought that up, uh, and we sometimes we can't well we can't judge what's in a person's heart right. when they are praying, um, but you can't help sometimes when you do hear some people pray, just wonder why are they praying <laughs> as they yeah. go on for three to five minutes. But anyway, yeah, enough yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah, funny funny uh, tag along with the scripture, First Thessalonians five seventeen, when Paul says pray without ceasing, he's not saying. Um, at one time <laughs> no Excuse no me. that you bring up an interesting point now with that pray without ceasing what's that mean well it i know there's many times throughout the day sometimes i'll just sit and just in quiet and silence it's kind of like elijah sitting in the cave and you know what's that like uh, yeah, just sitting there in quiet and just uh the holy spirit inter interceding on my behalf yeah uh, and knowing and just uh in, in quiet in the quiet of my mind praying to god I do that quite often. Um, I think that's what Paul means is the attitude of always be ready to uh, bring your needs to God at any time, all the time. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be in a formalized setting or have to be in church or some other, I mean, it can be just at home or it can be work, it can be anywhere. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that's yeah. kind of how yeah. I took that verse. No, I, and that's, that's a, uh, that is a good verse to understand because it, it sounds like a, a law that we can't keep, which, by the way, all the laws of God we cannot keep. But it sounds like um, it sounds like a an, an extreme, you know, like pray without ceasing. You know, we we do have to talk to other people besides God to to function in this world. Um, so so yeah, I, I think it's that always to be ready to pray and 
and I, I, I've probably used this concept to death or shared this concept to death, but um, we have so many transitions throughout our life. But I think one of the ways that I've tried to help myself live according to that pray without ceasing ideal is whenever I'm transitioning to a new task is to try to begin it in prayer and and end what I'm wrapping up in prayer and right, right. and even t taking it to an extreme of uh, when you're walking into a, a new room or a new setting or meeting a new person, um, keep it at the front of your mind that this is an opportunity to say a quick little prayer in your mind, like, Lord, bless this person. May our relationship be fruitful. Um, you know, just, just small things like this um, are great ways to pray without ceasing in our life. And it doesn't have to interrupt your, your daily activities. It can be a beneficial thing because it grounds you with the one who's in control of all things anyway, i want to pick your mind out i didn't mention it to you before we got on go for recording it. but uh I, I never do that what, to you <laughs> yeah, that's my turn for you anyway yeah. no it uh what about the idea when, when jesus talks about in the sermon about uh when you pray pray in secret hmm. and your father heavenly father hears you in secret rewards you in secret what about the idea of where do you think jesus is trying to go with it? i do struggle with that sometimes there are, you know, there's many times you go out to a restaurant and you pray for your food openly. And I do have that practice, but I also I always have that teaching of Jesus in the back of my mind. Am I just doing this to be seen by others or am yeah. I just giving thanks to God or uh, how do you take that, that verse? No, I, th I think you started to answer it. So thank you. But but I, I would go along <laughs> with that. You know, it's it's um, so, yeah, Matthew six, five, verse six verses five and six says and when you pray do not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others truly i tell you they have received their reward in full but when you pray go into your room close the door and pray to your father who is unseen then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you yeah and i think this picks up well what we were talking about earlier about you know what's the heart uh what's at the heart of your prayer what's the purpose of your prayer are you doing it to be seen by others and and if that's the case then you're you're really not praying appropriately and, um and, but at the same time i think more to your point more to your question is are we only supposed to pray in secret you know does god only hear when we yeah, pray in secret? right and 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 i i don't think so i think um a lot of what jesus says in the um sermon on the mount is speaking in hyperbole um and i think that would be a hyperbolic statement that um, and it's not even an, uh, an um, utter hyperbole. He doesn't. He doesn't say. Then your father who sees you, then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And then and only then um, in that circumstance. But I think it gives the impression of that circumstance in order to to teach us the importance of having the proper heart, having the proper approach to God. And that is is that when we're praying. It's not for the approval of men, but it's for the gifts of God that he he stands ready to deliver to us. No, because I reason why, because I had two extremes that I've I've witnessed over the years. One time at a restaurant, I saw a big, long table. Of people actually stand up, hold hands, pray mm -hmm. out loud. And each were praying for over their food. And I thought for, it was kind of more of a show. Yeah, that, that was my I mean, that was one thing. But then when you see that, like another example, you see a a family off to the corner someplace, quietly bow, bowing your heads. You really can't hear them, but you know they're praying. Yeah. yeah I, to me, that it, when I see that, that's more in a sense of praying in the secret, even though they're praying in a public area. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that would be a great illustration of what that should should look like, at least how I would take Jesus's instructions there. So, yeah. yeah. Um. Now, what are some of the things we should pray for? Yeah, yeah, that that's always a good question. I um, I always like to when I'm teaching confirmation class, I ask the kids, you know, what's the latest thing you guys want? Is it a concert ticket? Is it video games? And I think it's more video games lately than anything. But uh, um, you know, is it okay? And then I ask them, is it okay to pray for that? You know, Lord, um, you know, help me get tickets to go see the Backstreet Boys. You know, <laughs> is that is that a <laughs> healthy prayer to pray? Yeah. And, and so right. I've, I've tried to pull that question from the kids because I think it's a good thing to consider because we're telling them to pray all the time. We're telling them to pray for all that we need. And, um, and, and so can we, to kind of change the question a little bit or 
to reframe it is can we pray for temporal earthly things can we pray for things that on the grand scale don't matter and and i like to say yes um but i but i don't think we should pray for those things more than we should pray for the necessary things and 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 that's what that's why where we started or or when I made that point of this is one of the big points I want us to take is that we include the word of God, scripture in our prayers, the promises of God in our prayers is because I think those are the key things for us to pray for. Um, and it's it seems counterintuitive because when we pray the promises of God, we know what the answer is going to be. When we say, God, forgive my sins. God's not going to say, nope, not today. We we know the answer is going to be yes. And, and when we pray for uh, salvation. We, we know that God's going to give it to us. When we pray for the, the peace that passes all understanding, we may not feel it, but we know God's desire is to give it to us. And, and, and so I think those are the big things we need to pray for. But when it comes to this earthly realm, and, and I went to an extreme with concert tickets and video games, but you know it could be something as simple as, um, something as, uh, not simple, but something as um, honorable as asking God for a, a better work environment or asking God for a cure to cancer um, that, that might be uh, ailing you or a cure to cancer in general. It's a great, great prayer. I, I think those are great things to pray for. Um, but, but I think more than what we should, whether we should pray for those things or not, um, is to know that um, what we pray for, we may not receive um, if it's on the, the human realm or on the temporal um, right, right. realm of things. Is that kind of where you go with that? Yeah, I would. And I would just say it's probably not it's not a biblical thing to do to pray for something sinful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I didn't go there. And, and maybe the yeah. Magic Boys are sinful. <laughs> that's that's always an interesting thing. And yeah. that becomes a morality uh, right. question more than a um, or a conscience question and, and morality more than a prayer question. You know, should you be going to that concert or playing that video game where you blow people's heads up? You know, that's that's another conversation to have. Um, but yeah, so when things are not sinful, I think we yeah should be praying for them. But you know, you you said something that it, I do think where sometimes the confusion is on prayer and the means of grace, because when we do pray like to the Father, forgive us our sins, mm -hmm. we know that He's going to do the, do so because He promised. Yeah, but I think that's where the confusion sometimes that we can make that we can view prayer as a means of grace because we're praying for one of God's promises. Yeah. And we can conflate the two together. <clears throat> we really need to keep those things separate, but it's easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and I don't know if. Um, I don't know. So so let me ask a counter question. So when we pray in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass us, is is God forgiving us our prayer, our forgiving us our trespasses in that moment? Uh I would say, well, you if you would have to say not because of the prayer itself. Hmm. Yeah. Because because again, that becomes a vehicle or means. Yeah, it's, it's almost as if we're achieving that. So, so where is forgiveness of sins found? It's it's found well, where, the, the, word, where the word of well, God. Yeah, where the right, where the word of God, where those promises, where you through the means of grace, word and sacrament. But also, to remember too, though, is when we're asking the Lord to to, to uh, forgive us our sins, we we also we forget a lot of times about the objective understanding how Christ has forgiven your sins at the cross. Yeah, already. Yeah, you know, we're asking for something that Christ has already won for us, right? Yeah, no, I think that's I think that's a good good thing to to chew on because because I, I I would say that when we pray, forgive us our trespasses, um, in the Lord's prayer, God, like you said, it's it's done. So the answer is yes, and and guess what? We're using the word of God. We're we're calling on His promise. We're we're actually hearing that promise as we pray it. So. So I would say yes, but I, I like what what you've introduced to my thinking here is that um, God also then leads us to the places where that forgiveness is given to us. So I think he um, kind of fleshing that out a little bit. He answers the prayer, forgive us our trespasses, not only in the moment, but also at the altar, at the, right, the pulpit, right. at the font, in the confession and absolution that we hear in church or in private confession absolution. The Lord 
says, yes, I forgive you, and I'm going to keep on forgiving you, and, and um, leads us to those places where forgiveness is distributed. Right. And it's, uh, but I think what prayer does, though, we do ask for these things in prayer and relating to God. It reminds us, it's a reminder for us as individuals that, um, that God will always bring us those good things that he has promised. Yeah. And I, I, it's kind of what you just said, really. But for me, in my mind, it reminds me right. uh, when I'm praying to God that he does bring these things to me. Yeah, no, absolutely. It might, it might, it might not be. I might not have that uh, objective assurance at that moment while I'm praying. But I do know when I go to church on Sunday, when I hear the words of absolution, eat and drink for the forgiveness of your sins, or right. the sermon that's preaching law and gospel. Yeah. Uh, there I know. Yeah. You know, yep. at, at the same time. No, and, and you got my you got my my brain firing down that path because I'm I'm thinking of uh, a John Doe, a uh, former church member. Um, I'm not thinking of an actual person, but there's people I've talk to who speak this way who who say you know i don't go to church anymore but i i still believe and i still pray the lord's prayer every day and and i wonder at what point do you cross a line where um not that god's saying no your sins aren't forgiven in the lord's prayer but at what point maybe are you is the lord's prayer no longer god's word but it's now your talisman your 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 deed your you're doing you know i'm checking the lord's prayer box and and so i i don't know i'm not god so i can't stand here and say um god doesn't forgive the the sins for the person who's you know been away for church for three years but praise the lord's prayer every day but I, but i think that's a that's a you're putting yourself really out there on a limb and, and you need to go back to the root back to the source back to the vine um and be grafted in and, and abide with the one who's yeah. who's giving you those words i i would say that person john doe is living in a false sense of reality or assurance yeah. he is because it might be okay right now right but when life will hit that john doe sideways whatever how that might be a crisis of faith a crisis in physical health whatever that might be right a huge that, that word of, yeah. yeah that word of assurance is cannot is not found in the lord's prayer yeah that'd be that would be my argument um i, I think that's a great point I, I, it would have to be as Luther talks about when he's talking about the, the sacrament and in the catechism. You know, if you if you don't go to the catechism at least once a year, pinch yourself to make sure. I think it's if I'm in the right area. Uh, I don't know if I am or not. If you find that goal, with it. let me know because I was looking for something <laughs> along those lines yesterday. Actually, in my sermon yesterday, I said Luther says in the large catechism that if you're struggling in your faith you should pray the lord's prayer every day as i was writing my sermon that came to me because i thought i'd read it somewhere and then after my sermon i went and i couldn't find it and i'm like oh my gosh i just invented a, a quote but you know but just what just like what you just said though is correct yeah if you're struggling pray the lord's prayer every day because it reminds you of god's promises and then yeah. also leads you to again where we said three or four times already to wear that assurance where those promises can be found for sure right and it's actually applied to you yeah and, and so john doe who's praying the lord's prayer he's he, he's uh he's he's separating himself from those means of grace that bring him that assurance right of a salvation he's living in a subjective christianity yeah yeah that actually, in a sense. absolutely and that, that's kind of where where i was going with that or or where I was at with that is that this is this is someone who's made faith not into the thing that God's given them, but to the thing that they're made and tailored for themselves. And then God's called us to something so much more beautiful and reassuring. Because it runs into the danger of making uh having faith in faith. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Well, I, I want to go to one one verse that I uh um wanted to bring about. I just got a picture my uh my wife is showing me an answer to prayer. Um, we have we have chickens in our our yard this year, and uh, we got the first fruits of our chicken are oh boy. showing up. I guess that's <laughs> the second egg she's found today. So we've been we've been praying and waiting for them to to bear eggs, but now they are. So um, anyways, uh, but John fifteen verse seven, Jesus said, "If you abide in me 
and my words abide in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. What's he talking about there? Well, I think it summarizes what we talked about already when we're on those spiritual things where God has promised to like forgive us our sins, give us the promise of our resurrection. And even with we praying for health things, we know that we will be fully healed on the day of resurrection. Right. But also it, uh, we can come to the Lord that desire, I think, has to be defined by God's word. And we talked about earlier. Are we praying in accordance to God's will? Uh, or are we praying for things that we know are, con are contrary to God's will? Mm -hmm. Well, that desire can mean, I mean, if we pray to our fleshly desires, God's not going to answer those prayers. Yeah. Or sometimes he might actually might give you what you want and give you a taste of what that looks like sometimes too. Mm. You know, if you want to dance with the devil, he might play the record for you mm. in a sense. Just, you know, is that chastisement? Don't go there. Yeah. But I think for the most part, it, it's always grounded in God's promises. If it's a temporal thing, which you mentioned earlier, it will be according to his will. Yeah. That desire. Yeah. Uh, and, and sometimes it might be, he'll answer that prayer in a way we might not quite understand or agree with. It's not what we expected, but it's what's good for us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, that, and that's uh, a lot there. But what do you think? No, I, I think you're 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 barking up the tree. I'm I'm hopefully grafted into right. Um, <laughs> Psalm 37 verse four is very similar to this, where it says, "Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart." Um, and and yeah, I think our sinful twisting of our um, relationship in this world or our position in this world likes to say, "Well, I love the things of God, so where's my million bucks?" You know, um, that's I, I think where our again, where our sinful condition takes us, but, but truly to delight in the, the Lord and to abide in his word, um, to abide in Christ means to know the promises of Christ. And this goes back to that point, you know, of including the words of God in our prayers. And, and I, and I love um, the, the, the concept that, that prayer is a conversation with God. Um, but, but I think we, we often think of it as we're initiating the conversation, but, but God's the one who first spoke the world into existence and he didn't stop speaking to us there. And so he's initiated this conversation and, and we get to, to talk with him and, and knowing the things that he wants to talk about. Um, that's, that's what I see going on here. So, so when, when we abide in Christ and, and Christ's words abide in us, you know, our wishes, our desires are going to be Christ-like, and, and that we know will be done for us, and, and that's right. that's where I think a Christian needs to be, and, and where we can rest confidently, and, and it, fully understanding what that means joyfully. Well, you got me thinking, again, you got my wheel spinning here, with what you just said. You know, in a sense, Paul talks about, you know, we should pray for peace, and we can be content with what we have. Hmm to go about our daily chores and labors in life. I, I think a lot, I think a lot of that had, when we're praying to God is just, we're praying to him so we can have those things that give us that contentment, right? You know, the, our daily bread, I'm going back to the Lord's prayer again, <laughs> our daily bread, good fellowship, you know, forgive those who have sinned against us as we can forgive them, you know, just live at peace with each other and within our families, our neighbors and provided a roof, you know, uh, shelter, food, an egg, <laughs> you know, but, but those things are, they're all gifts from God. And those are the things we keep praying for, not, Hey Lord, give me a yacht or right. you know, a house in, on the Island of Monaco or something. I mean, that's, it's those things of contentment that we wish to have and right. that all people really desire. Yeah. And, and I think that's, that's the beauty of God's ordered creation is that the things God wants to give us, the things that God readily gives us, are the things we need. We've been sold a, 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 a bad bill of goods. Is that how it said? It? We've been sold a, a, a lie that, that we need more than God gives. And um, so, so yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing to, to wrap your head around and to, to rest in, to know that God's, God's well, got it. It's the parable coming up in our pericopes for this coming Sunday. Oh, I, you're looking at, I'm not preaching this weekend. So what is oh, it? It's the, the, the count of the, the rich fool who wanted to 
build more barns to store everything he had. Yeah, it's in Luke 12, uh, 13 through 21. Right. Um, it, it's that mindset, uh, you know, now I can have everything, I, you know, within that parable, Jesus teaches the uh, the man who did, he built his barns, he, he had an abundance of produce, you know, of, uh, of crops, and now so I can eat and be merry. Yeah. You know. Uh, with, but tonight with your soul is required of you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and with the with the exclusion of God. Yeah. I can be merry and, and content. And I think that's where the unbelievers, that's where they fail many times because they don't realize that the good things they have come from God as well. Yeah. And they don't give him the thanks, praise, and glory for those things. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we've said a lot about prayer and what the Bible says about prayer. Is there anything else you want to say about prayer? what the bible says about prayer before we wrap up i don't know i usually don't watch these over again but i might have to watch this one again because we did say a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm with you i don't know what that says yeah. about our the quality of our content that we can't bear to watch it again but <laughs> but <laughs> yeah um this might be one of my might have to rewatch myself yeah i i guess just one last thought and this was something that i thought about beforehand um you know, sometimes we, when talking about this conversation with God and, and people um, want to hear physically or, or mentally hear or experience God's voice back to them. What does the Bible say about that? What, it, what do we, is, is prayer a two-way conversation? Um, and uh, well, I do how, how does that leery. two-way conversation work? Yeah, I do get leery when I hear people say, well, the Lord spoke to me. Mm -hmm. I hear that a lot from, you know, especially when I hear it a lot from people who will repeat that over where the Lord spoke to me then. A lot from the same person. Song. Yeah, same yeah. person. And I, I, I'm a little bit skeptical of those things. Now, I, you know, it, uh, but with the, the person who said, you know, the one time I had a person, I had a dream 15 years ago and it just stuck with me and I kind of followed along with what it said. And, uh, you know, it, the Lord spoke that one time. Now, I, I'm not going to question something like that because that was a gift to that person. Yeah. You know, or you hear stories, accounts where uh, Muslims are praying. Next thing you know, uh, they're seeing a picture of Jesus in a vision or tell them to go to a church. You see, you're hearing a lot of that stuff about what's going on in Europe. Yeah. I, who am I to question that? Right. These Muslims are now coming to Christian churches and, and Germany, for example, and now they're becoming converting to Christianity. Yeah, I I cannot question that. That's something that's actually happening. And right, um, yeah, so it, it's a both. You, it's a you, both you, look at, you look at the fruits of those right. revelations, and, and that's what that the word is. Is how we talk about it. It's a revelation from God. And um, so, and, and 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 just to be explicit, I, I I like to make sure people aren't expecting a direct revelation from god god has not promised it um hebrews 1 verse 1 is probably the the clearest on this in many and various ways god spoke to his people of old by the prophets but now in these last days he's spoken to us by his son and and so that that describes what we see because i think what people want is what you know moses had or, or what isaiah had what jeremiah these old testament prophets they have these dialogues with god even arguments with gods and uh with god and um god hasn't promised that for you as a new testament era christian and uh and and just to crawl back into that he didn't even promise that for all the people of the old testament it was a select few who were made to be prophets and and uh, had that conversation ability with god um so so i i like to caution people and tell them God has not promised that. Now, kind of like you're saying, I, I'm not going to deny it when somebody says they heard from God, but I will question it because that's what scripture tells us to do, to test the spirits. And, and it tells right, us right. Be false prophets. Um, and so we, we compare this word from God to God's clearly passed down, inspired by the Holy Spirit word that we have in scripture. And if it doesn't match up, then I'm going to say that's of the devil or of my own sinful heart you know out of the heart comes evil desires that's what the bible says about the heart or the inner working so we should always be skeptical when we have these revelations from god 
and, and determine are, and did I just eat a, a spicy burrito is or or <laughs> am I actually hearing from the yeah. author of the universe okay. and chances are um, you you might not be hearing directly from the author of the universe but but one of the things that I think is beautiful for Christians to revel in is that as we have our minds transformed by the word of God our minds will be hearing God's word and that's where we need to go to it and that's where I, I kind of ended the question uh, with uh, how does that two-way conversation take place and it is God has spoken to us through his son Jesus he's spoken to us through the word that we have received and, and that's why going back to it again that's why I think we need to pray with our bible open because that's where God gives his will for the world for us and and that's where we can hear from him you know and just to add to that I I, I myself have prayed for Lord, give me the scriptures or the, the you know, give me the words mm. to say yeah. based off scriptures. And, and that has happened. Yeah. The Bible verses will flow into my head and uh, and I will say things based off what I'm thinking about based off those scriptures. Yeah. And I think about when Jesus, uh, I think it was specifically for his apostles, but I think there's an application for, for everyone in a sense that, you know, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to put you in remembrance of all things that I have taught you. Yeah. Now, I think that, again, that was specifically for those apostles. And with we have the canonization of, you know, the writing of scriptures as well. Mm -hmm. But by application, I think, you know, as Christians are into the word of God. And you ask the Lord to put you in remembrance of those things he has taught you. He will give you those words of scripture yeah. to base your conversation around and to say the right things that need to be said at the time. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's that's one of my favorite um, go-to prayers when I'm meeting with somebody, whether it's a, a regular homebound visit or a hospital visit or a counseling visit with somebody here in my office is, Lord, give me your words to say. And it's yeah, it's amazing how many times I, I walk away. I'm like, yep, thank you, God. <laughs> you delivered. Yeah. Right. yeah. So. All right. Well, we should probably quit. This is getting to be one of our longer ones, so we should uh, wrap it up. If you got any questions about anything we said, let us know. If you got any comments, we'd love to hear them. And um, any future topics you'd love us to tackle, throw them our way. Yeah, we'd like to. We need some topics, so please, everyone, throw yeah. them out there. Yep. All right. Well, God bless you. We'll we'll see you when we see you. Yep. Take care.